Hello everybody, That Gardening Guy here, and today we're going to be doing something very exciting. Today we're going to be transplanting our seedlings to a little bit bigger pot, something that will hold it until frost. Or if you already have your pots ready, if you're doing sort of a patio garden, you can put them right in there and they won't be disturbed. As you can see here, here's the egg carton greenhouse. 100% success rate for the tomatoes. These two here on the left are the peppers and they take a little bit longer. So if they haven't come up yet, don't fret. Like I said, they can take a little bit longer than the rest of your tomatoes. So here we have uh, different varieties. I have my Romas, yellow pears. These are kind of to fill in. These are my extras. And like I said before, you want to have some extras and just because some are just not going to make it all the way through. Some could go wrong in transplanting. You might just get a bad seed. Anyway, so now what we're going to do is if you've got your seeds, the seedlings at this point, what you want to do is get them to a bigger pot so you don't stunt the roots. So now I'm going to show you how to do that. Alright, we have our pots here. If you looked at the last video, you can see where I got these. These are what the cord pineapple comes in in our local Meyer store. You can probably get these at Walmart. Keep in mind though, these are not a retail item. You can't just walk in and ask to buy these. They won't let you do that. But these I've saved over months. A lot of my family likes to do juicing, so what I ask is I just ask them to, could you please save them? I'll wash them out. And you get yourself, uh, for pretty much no cost, a really nice looking little pot. And the best part is, since they're clear, you can see exactly when the root system hits the side and how long you have before you need to transplant, provided they take off a little faster than you like, which is okay. Because later on we can talk about if you actually want to get them outside before the frost, there are certain coverings you can do to protect them, but I digress. Anyway, so what we're gonna, I'm going to show you right now, really quick and simple, is how to prepare them. The problem with these is they don't have any holes in the bottom, so we're going to fix that. Generally, you can just, if you have like a little ice pick or something like that, you can just poke it right through. What I have here is a drill with a pretty small bit. And I'm just going to drill three little holes in kind of a triangle. There you go, and if you drill it carefully, you can get it through all through about five. I stack five at a time when I do that. You can go through and do each one separately, but if you want to save some battery and save some time, you can do it that way. And here we have our little pots. I don't know if you can see, now they have little holes in the bottom. And that way uh, we can keep our soil well drained and they won't flood the roots. So now let's get to the fun part of actually getting these things out of the carton and into our pots. All right, a very important thing to consider when transplanting is what type of soil your plants are going to be growing in and what type of soil they prefer. And for tomatoes, what you need is a very well-drained soil, hence the little holes in the bottom here, that has a lot of uh, broken down organic matter in it. And what I mean is you can go get potting soil, that's fine, but if you see here I got some little sticks, things like that, if they're breaking down in there, it's not a problem. When they break down, they feed the roots with some great nutrients. And what I have here is just a potting soil mix with a little bit of marsh dirt. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. I, I live near a marsh and this stuff is just great because essentially for I don't know how many years that place has been undisturbed and all that's been happening is plants taller than me have been rising up and dying every year. It makes for some really, really great soil, but not completely. Uh, it's more of an additive. You can't just grow it in all that uh, in all that type of soil just because it doesn't retain water all, the, all that well. What I also have in here is a little bit of uh, aged horse manure, and since it's aged, it's safe. If you put it in too soon after it's been dropped, it can really do some damage to the root systems with the ammonia and different chemicals that can be uh, in horse manure. So, uh, as far as soaking it, you want to get the soil to be pretty moist. You don't want to just be putting your seedling in some dry dirt. And as a good rule of thumb, if you look at my past videos for when we actually put these things in the egg carton greenhouse, you can squeeze out a little bit of water. That means you've probably got it just about right. So pretty straightforward. You just want to mix it up in a bowl until it's about this consistency and put it right in your pot. You can do that with a spoon if you want to. I just use my hands just because it's faster. And hey, it's gardening. You're going to get your hands dirty. And there you are. You've got your little pot full. You're ready to put in your seedling. So we can just push this off to the side and let's get right to it. All right, now that we've got our pot all set, what we want to do is just take a little bit of dirt out of the center, dig a nice little thing that's about as, nice little hole that's about as big as the uh, egg pocket, I guess you'd call it, the size of little pockets we have in our egg carton. And you want to dig a little bit deeper than just that pocket, because you want to be burying the stem a little bit. And if you looked up anything at all about tomatoes, uh, you'll see, at least on yours, I could try to show you on mine, but I'm pretty sure the camera can't focus that well. But on the stem, you're going to notice there's these little hairs, and each one of those has the potential to become a root, so you want to bury them a little better, so when the roots kind of spread out, you've got yourself a fantastic root system, and we're probably going to have to do this again, maybe before we transplant them. Definitely when we do transplant them outside, but 
maybe a little bit before then if our plants are getting a little bit too tall. So what you want to do is now that you've got your little hole, just take, I'll set this off to the side for now. What I have here I, on the end here is the Roma variety. We'll get to those a little later. And just very gently, first check the bottom to see if you have roots growing out the little holes. If not, you're not really in danger of injuring them too much. You just want to take a little teaspoon and very, very gently work around the sides. And the little pocket should pop right out. If the, if the root comes out, if a bunch of dirt falls away, don't worry about it. Just be very, very gentle. Looks like this one kind of fell away, and that's okay. We're just going to have to be a little more delicate with it. See, uh, you don't want to disturb that little clump there where the dirt is. you got a lot of little roots starting in there. And just very, very gently lower that plant into the hole, keeping a good bit on top. You don't want to bury the leaves. You just want to leave maybe about, if they're about as tall as these, you want to leave about an inch out the top. Just grab a little bit of dirt from your bowl. And very slowly, making sure you keep it even on all sides, so you keep your plant centered. Put in a little dirt on all the sides and just very lightly pack it in. And there you go. Congratulations, you have just transplanted your first tomato plant. You can do that with the rest of these. I, I could show you the rest, but the process is the exact same. Later on when it comes to peppers, I'll do a different video. It'll probably be very short. But now that you have it transplanted, what you want to do is just like before, you can try to make a little covering for this if you want to, but at this point they're pretty well self-sustaining, so you don't necessarily need a greenhouse cover. If you want to, you can, because it really can help the process along quite a bit. But just like before, kind of set them near a window or someplace they're going to get a lot of sun. I definitely would not put them outside yet, unless you can bring them in every day. Just because, at least up here in Michigan, the frost has definitely not... Uh, the danger of frost has definitely not subsided. almost forgot one thing you can't forget to do is label it. I've already put a little sticker on this one. It says Roma, so I won't be confused later on. I actually had to go back into the footage of the other video to figure out what I put in this egg carton. I completely forgot after I'd said, don't forget, don't forget. Trust me, if you don't write it down or stick it somewhere, you'll forget. And one thing I want to do before we, uh, before I sign off is show you what this will look like in about a week after, provided you do uh, everything you need to do, keep it in a warm place, make sure it's getting plenty of sunlight. Uh, this is Aroma about a week later than this one here. And you can see it's getting a very healthy growth of leaves, looking very healthy indeed. But you can also see on the left here, I didn't plant two seeds, and I want to show you one thing that can happen with these. Sometimes the root system, if it's allowed to head back up, sometimes it'll start a new plant. And trust me, you don't want that. That'll sap nutrients from this one. You want survival of the fittest on this one. You want the strongest one to survive. So very gently, what you want to do, just kind of pull that out. And you can just get rid of them. Don't worry about it. It will not have affected this one at all. And then you'll have this one grow up really, really strong and nice. All right, just thought I'd show you the little greenhouse and what i got going here for them. I've got grow lights on the top and bottom levels. I'll show you that in a second. And here's our new little guy that we just transplanted. So we're going to put him with the rest of the Romas. And I also wanted to show you that sometimes, for some reason or another, the transplants just don't go well. This is another little Roma. I don't exactly know what happened. He seemed just fine. Transplanted well, started some new growth, but then just kind of wilted. I don't think I could bring him back, so I'm probably just going to use the pot for something else. Uh, probably the same type. I'll just take a little shortcut, dig out a center, and get all the roots out of there, put in a new one. But yeah, that's just, that's just how that happens. That's how it goes. So like I said before, Make sure you plant more than you need, because this sort of thing is going to happen. I'll show you the bottom level that I got here. All sorts of tomatoes, and believe me, this is only probably about half of what I need to do. I still need to transplant a whole lot more, along with some peppers. Got some little apple trees over here on the left. I want to try my hand at uh, grafting in a couple of years when these have grown up to be good root stock. But that's something for a whole other time. So uh, I hope everything goes well for you, and from here on out, you'll probably just be seeing, uh, until the pepper videos, just some status videos every week or so, just to show how the tomatoes are looking, what you might need to do for pruning, just basic stuff like that. But until I see you next, good luck and happy gardening.